Hello, I'm Boris Lipka. I'm the Northern California Regional Director with the California High Speed Rail Authority. And today I'm joined by Therese McMillan, who is the Executive Director of the Metropolitan Transportation Commission and the Association of Bay Area Governments. So Therese, thank you for joining me. You've been the Executive Director here at MTC. Uh, after previously serving at the federal level, at the Federal Transit Administration, including leading that agency, uh, having stopped at the uh, LA Metro in Los Angeles to be the chief of planning there, and then previously having worked here in the Bay Area, uh, here at MTC as the deputy executive director. And so through all of that, you've had a tremendous impact on public transportation here in the Bay Area and across the country. And recently you announced uh, your retirement from MTC that's coming in early next year, and so we thought it was timely uh, to sit down and get your perspective and see see what we can learn uh, from yeah. this conversation with you. So thank you for being here. Well, it's delightful to be with you too. So having worked at d so many different levels of government, what do you think is your kind of biggest achievement and contribution uh, from your long and a successful career? You know, it's interesting to be at a point where you can say in the decades <laughs> that I've worked in public, in public service, and I, I am very proud of that. Um, Looking back, I would say that my equity work clearly is, if you want to use the term legacy, which I sometimes am shy about because it can be a little self-aggrandizing, <laughs> but to the degree that I have assisted people in realizing that if we don't overcome the significant disparities that we see in society that have held people back from opportunity um, on all manner of things, whether it's in transportation, whether it's in housing. If there are gaps between those who have and those who have not, then as a public servant, that bestows, I think, also a personal responsibility to have to deal with it. And if there's a singular thing I'm, I'm most proud of, in large part because other people are picking it up, is this idea that equity in our public sector work, it's not a project, it's not a program, it's a paradigm shift in how we think about people in every line of business that we have, and particularly those who are left most behind. So kind of a long, you know, <laughs> answer, but one on reflection of my career, I can clearly say, was, is the thing that I'm most proud of. In the Bay Area, you've been working on tackling some of the region's biggest challenges. And of course, in this position, you're, you're the head regional planner and thinker that we have. Uh, how have some of those challenges really evolved for the Bay Area over your time working at MTC? And what are some of the most vexing challenges that the Bay Area has today? The lack of affordable housing in this region is mind-blowing. It's real in a way now that I think people are really grasping. Right. That we can't solve the transportation problem unless we solve the housing problem. And that is, that intersectionality of planning is something that I think is, has been needed for a long, long time. But, um, and, and so that's a, that's a change, I think, in how we approach defining problems and how we approach solving them. What would you say have been some of the lessons learned from leading MTC and ABAG through some of the most probably challenging times that the region's faced with the pandemic, uh, transit recovery, uh, you know, the, the, the things really coming at us right now, uh, kind of what's been that process like and what are some lessons learned mm -hmm. from that? You know, I've had a lot of interesting sort of crisis-oriented challenges um, in my career, um, Hurricane Sandy, as an example, when sure. I was with the Federal Transit Administration, stands out. But it was nothing of this scale. And I think the one takeaway from all of that is that partnerships proved crucial. So there's a lot of continued collective work that we need to do. But I, th I do believe a lesson learned was, A, you can't solve something like that by yourself. You need to develop and trust partnerships to, again, define the problems and come up with the solutions, even if you don't you know, see everything eye to eye at every point. 
and at the end of the day, take a customer focused perspective on success. Right. Are we serving the people who need us? And, and so that was a really gratifying um, experience, one that we're building on now. Last year, MTC adopted Plan Bay Area 2050, the region's lo new long range plan. Can you talk us through the process of putting that together and what's new and different in this iteration of the plan compared to previous ones? It was built on the foundation that transportation, housing, the environment, particularly climate change, mm -hmm. and the economy were inextricably linked. I would say that one of the, of the many um, things that we had to consider with high-speed rail was its reflection of this mega region mm -hmm. concept. Um, and so high-speed rail as a very, and its potential to be a state transportation connector among the regions, high-speed rail and what it can do in terms of that connective tissue between regions is really critically important. So by long way of saying, as we developed our long range plan, um, even though we, didn't, we don't plan for high speed rail and do scenario, independent scenarios and whatnot because it's a state project, we had to consider um, very, very explicitly how it would impact transportation decisions we would be making in the mm -hmm. future. And um, on a small and large scale, I mean, I was speaking to sort of the larger sort of macro issues, but you know, it's sharing a corridor with California, with um, Caltrain. Mm -hmm. And as you know, we're talking right now about um, optimizing that relationship in pursuing federal funding. There's no bank that's <laughs> underwriting these mega projects just waiting for us to draw down. We have to go chase it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Cali Speed Rail is part of the pack. Just looking at sort of the region that we have for Northern California, we have you know, those partnerships that have to span everything from you know, Pacheco Pass and yeah. wildlife groups and others who oh, care about gosh, very yes. sensitive areas there to communities in South Santa Clara County mm -hmm. who might feel sort of disconnected from the rest of the region at times to you know, the big cities of San Francisco, San Jose and others. And so that's the region that we span and the partnerships that we build have to work in all those different locations and in all those different contexts. What have you learned from your lo long term involvement with large mega projects like ours? And why have you and MTC maintained your strong support for the program? I think another real challenge for high-speed rail, it's a challenge for public, well, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge often for transportation writ large. But particularly, I've seen it in, for public transportation, is this idea that you need to think of a system. Right. Okay, not just the individual <laughs> pieces, but truly a system. and. One of the challenges for high-speed rail, I think, has been legitimizing its role as a piece of a system in different individual regions, mm -hmm. right? Um, which it has to be, because if it doesn't, you get into that kind of janky you know, border issue. But um, systems thinking and connectedness as a real outcome of what we should be putting on the ground for people. Right, yeah. So building that systems sensitivity and that systems commitment, when so much of our funding and planning tends to be, have been built on a non-systems <laughs> look, I'll say, um, is, you know, it's just one of the things we have to keep working on. If you could offer some advice to somebody who might just be starting out their career in transportation, uh, what would be some lessons that you would impart to them? It really comes down to committing to serve the people that we are tasked to assist. Um, it's, it's important to begin to realize, and I can say at the start of my career, I didn't necessarily have that. You know, what you want to get, you know, a specific project done, right? I know that some people, it's like, I want 
<laughs> you know, I want to get a project. I want the ribbon cutting. I want to sure. see <laughs> the infrastructure on the ground. Great. <laughs> or, <clears throat> you know, we want to increase headways and we want to make these operations work in X, Y, Z. Fantastic. But if people aren't writing your system <laughs> or if the project doesn't in and of itself make the connections needed mm -hmm. to be effective, you've got a piece of infrastructure. You don't have a piece of mobility. Right. That's the difference. <laughs> and so I would say again, and, and very much and you know, proud, you know, carer of the of the public sector torch. <laughs> If you want to work in that, in, in that governmental space, which for some people can be really frustrating, and I would totally respect that, but if you're wanting to be there, you have to remember that the outcome is for the, for the people who are going, who deserve to see something better in terms of the quality of life, that there has to be a very specific focus on the equity aspects of that, that for some people, their improvement is going to be a far higher jump because they were left behind at the beginning. Sure. How do you keep that in mind? And again, long game. You, you need to also appreciate that even the smallest steps you can make build over time into something bigger and to be proud of that. So that would be my advice. <laughs> well, Therese, thank you very much for your time and, and joining uh, us today. It's uh, been a pleasure to have this conversation. And uh, for folks who want to learn more about High Speed Rail, you can visit us at www.hsr.ca.gov. And if you want to know more about the Metropolitan Transportation Commissioner ABAG, you can go to um, bayareametro.gov and there's a whole array of things you can chase down. Thanks very Thanks much. Thanks, Boris. <laughs> Appreciate it.